Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're back in the VAB today because uh, I'm going to punish all of you with uh, another build episode because I'm not a whole lot of uh, active missions going on uh, at this particular time, and we're fairly good on money, so I'm not being doing the useless flights just to uh, earn some payout. But uh, I did take a contract for a uh, uncrewed. Uh, Phobos flyby, an uncrewed Deimos flyby, and an uncrewed Deimos landing. And I was hoping to accomplish all three of these with uh, a singular craft on a singular launch, since we have this uh, awesome Mars window going up and I haven't quite been able to fill every single nook and cranny of uh, that Mars window with other things that were being shipped up to Mars. So uh, we're just going to add one more to the fray. Because, you know, why not? So, I'm going to get building, and I'll uh, speed this up for you so you're not staring at this for an hour and a half and give you some commentary and post. So, I'll pick you guys up in just a bit. And, well, we'll start off with our uh, standard one-ton bus and then uh, take a look at some of our new antennas that we just unlocked. This is uh, kind of like the style that was on Cassini, the actual Cassini. And it is teeny tiny. But uh, it weighs less, and I think it's got higher bandwidth than the uh, high-gain antennas we were using before. And better range, so uh, why not give it a proving ground here? Is uh, kind of the logic behind that. And uh, I spent a lot of time here <laughs> looking for a part that I apparently have not unlocked yet, and the, that would be the, uh, well, the, the winch that uh, you can mount laterally so I had to take the stack mount winch put some harpoons on it and then just uh, tuck it in a little bit and check for clearances so um, both of these moons are really low gravity you can fall for days and still not hit them or exceed a meter per second or two so I figured having a harpoon to attach us to the surface and um, kind of reel us in safely would be uh, pretty nice so that's exactly what I've done. Uh, the plan right now was really only to land on Deimos because that's the only part where we have the contract for. We do have a contract to fly by Phobos, but not to land on it. They wouldn't offer us both. So really we're just shooting for a landing and we'll see how it goes. We also have this uh, new Exo Kerbal drill that would be uh, really cool to get some science from that provided of course we can make it to where it doesn't uh, tip us over and then the uh, super fun part of weight balancing your science experiments I'm trying to figure out what is going to go where and how you're going to offset it right now I'm just trying to offset the weight of that RTG and yeah I'll catch that mistake in a little bit but so um, just trying to yeah, all of that offsets that single RTG, and that's kind of mind-boggling, especially considering that we have uh, quite a few more scientific experiments that we'd like to include on this trip. There's the uh, radio plasma wave um, antenna. But uh, I do want to get some goo samples, but uh, because of the weight of the other experiment that I want to put over there, the orbital telescope, it can be offset by the weight of three goo samples, which is a little crazy, but um, I figure, hey, we're doing two flybys and a landing, so one for each flyby, or low space, hopefully, and then one for the landing. I know they don't uh, pay out particularly well when you don't bring them home, but every little bit will help just a bit. So I'm going to get these set just a little lower, and I think that completes our scientific loadout. Yeah. Not looking too bad, really, uh, for such a overcrowded little guy. <laughs> and, alright, uh, I don't really think that we need an independent engine for this or one kilonewton thruster, seeing as how we're going some places with absolutely minuscule gravities, so we're just going to rely on RCS ports. I'll just get a, uh, a few of them attached here, and hopefully these will be high enough to be uh, effective against the center of mass so that we can rotate. Uh, I would hope, and of course, fueling them puts us over our tonnage. That's really not a whole lot of fuel, so, hmm, um, see how much exactly we can wedge in here with a decent amount of battery before we start to uh, incur that weight penalty, and really I put in either too much or not enough battery, 
entirely. So, all right, we'll do that. Yeah, bring that back up. I'm, I'm not done here. And errors unit N2O. And I, I know the offset, but not off the top of my head, and nor do I know exactly, and nor do I really feel like calculating it. But it looks like we're going to need another core um, if I want to get as much fuel on this thing as I would like. So we'll just add one of these and kind of sink it in a little bit. That's still not looking too terrible, right? I'm pretty happy with this. It's coming along quite nicely. Uh, yeah, there were a few other experiments I could have included on here. The uh, the laser. Um, ooh, and I forgot the name. <laughs> Shoots a laser and burns things, and then it measures the uh, the smoke and the flash from what's burning, so you can tell what elements compose it. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, we're setting up our action groups. This is our radio in. It's going to run all our scientific data. And uh, I think I don't know if these um, Kerbal Attachment System parts are going to be on the signal delay or not, but I hooked up an action group for them just in case. And I did duplicate that science uh, experiment. I think I missed the barometer. So we'll just uh, slap actually two barometers on there. Oops. Yeah. And go back and reset it there. And it should uh, remain still in its action group. All right. So um, just going to play a little bit more with our fuels and make sure everything's good. And also make sure all of our tanks are locked. Yeah. And I think we're actually approaching the maximum capacity for our uh, one-ton bus here. And we're still not over our weight limit. It's perfect. Uh, I, I'll take it. <laughs> it's just uh, the question of is one RTG going to be enough to run both of those cores at full yield and the antennas? Um, I'm assuming they will. But now we got to figure out our transfer vehicle. It's going to be responsible for getting us safely into orbit of Mars. Provided, of course, that our uh, DN1A throws us far enough to get there without uh, it needing to burn to assist. And uh, this is me just trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. And uh, I really liked the way that uh, I set up the uh, the Saturn mission, the Tartarus Kronos lander, with the uh, probe still being kept on top, but a heat shield and a fairing covering it to protect it during uh, arrow braking. And so I think I'm going to try to do that again here, because I will be trying to aero capture at Mars. It's just, it's a freebie, and I think I've done it enough times to where I can figure it out. It's just a matter of getting that antenna kind of out of the way so that we can mount something to the top of that core. So we'll, we'll use a robotic hinge. That's kind of neat. Uh, for no other real reason than it's, uh, it looks cool. And apparently it's not going to offset our center of mass, or at least it's not showing that it offset our center of mass. So I'm just going to run with it. All right, so now we'll get the fairing tucked up top and get our sizes right and then uh, slap a heat shield on it. Three meter, that, that should be good enough. Now that is only a uh, low Earth orbit rated heat shield, which actually means that it's uh, more than stout enough to deal with the rarefied atmosphere at Mars. I did not need to be sending very heavy lunar rated heat shields this whole time. And we'll uh, slap uh, one side of the fairing on here just to get our sizing correct. And we'll make sure that's not going to collide. I'd hate for that to cause an issue. And then we can build out the rest of our spacecraft underneath it. So, um... I think I've decided, I don't know if that core is actually going to be beefy enough. It only runs us up to about 11 tons, and it doesn't shut down. Now, the, um, ooh, I forgot what it's called, the core that I always use does shut down, and so therefore I think it makes a, a little bit better of a candidate for this mission. We'll go with a single AJ-10 Advanced, and make sure we've got the right version, and then it's time to start uh, fueling our tanks here on our transfer stage and just uh, seeing what our delta V numbers come out to be and then oh yeah maybe I should uh, put some thrusters on here some heavy duty ones because I imagine we're going to have some pitch error during our aero capture maneuver that's always kind of been a thing and we'll need some down here to ullage 
And those should be offset from the center of mass enough to give us uh, some turning. I don't really think we'll need lateral motion. And RTGs, because they're simple and reliable. And then we'll just get our comms equipment here in place. There we go. And that just about does it, except for getting our tanks painted. We'll kind of go with a very similar theme here, but you know, gold foil always looks good on stuff. So I, I think that's it. We're, we're pretty much ready to go. We'll just get uh, a boot action group uh, dialed in here. We'll go ahead and stretch our fairings across all four, and it, uh, it kind of looks like we're sending a, a very fancy soda can to Mars. Huh, to go explore the Mars's moons. This is a placeholder name. Of course, um, I do prefer when you guys help me name stuff because I'm just terrible at naming conventions. We would just have the blankety blank explorer, whereas spaceship you make space face. Yeah, so here's our, our original DN1A. Uh, this is still using the standard E1s on their boosters and two J2s at the, the bottom. The transfer stage is the HV stage, so it's the four RL10s uh, instead of the single J2 of the B upper stage, short for S4B, kind of. Anyway, so we're going to make some corrections down here to the engines. I'm going to get those tucked in very nicely, and we're going to trash those J2s. And after way too long of searching through this thing and thinking, oh man, did the, did the HG3s disappear? Are they gone? Why can't I find them? I'm going to literally go through this item by item, walking past them at least 10 times. There they are. Here's my brand new uh, HG3 C levels. I'm just making sure we're still in the C level configuration. We are, fantastic. And we'll get them tucked in. And then uh, I guess, yeah, and tucked in some more and tucked up. And uh, then I will just go ahead and turn you right back over to old me. Uh, well, uh, I think that's going to do it for this build. Um, let me know what you think. I, I do need a name for this little guy, so if you've got a suggestion, please uh, list it in the comments below and tell me why you think it makes a good name. It always helps uh, convince me on stuff, but um, I, I don't really decide. It's based on likes, so if somebody has an awesome comment, give it a like. Um, you know, <laughs> share it around. Um, yeah, not much else really to say uh, about this little guy and uh, about these HG3s that we're given another run on this one. Hopefully I can get a, uh, a better flight plan, but I'm thinking that initial thrust weight ratio of 1.83, and that's if nothing from that tank has been drained. Uh, this thrust to weight ratio is not accurate because these are not fully fueled. They'll be, they'll be done by the pumps, but uh, we are going to light them on the ground since they have just such a much better specific impulse. But, uh, like I said, some of these numbers are not accurate because these boosters aren't full. And then uh, 5,000 in the, uh, in the uh, HV stage. Ooh, that's the four RL10s because I, I don't think we need a hard-hitting J2 or even an H3 to push this around. And then 4,300 meters per second in the orbiter itself before we even get rid of the lander. So we've got uh, a lot of a lot of room to play with on this, and hopefully this will be a uh, a good successful mission, and maybe we'll even get touchdowns on both Phobos and Deimos, um, depending on how much I like the orbiter. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. Sorry it was so short, but uh, thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.